think it's straight ahead. Chenault to the end zone for the touchdown. This game is not that complicated. Don't overthink it. Sometimes it's simply a keen grasp of the obvious. Who's our best player, and in what way can we get him the football? Well, there wasn't much to cheer about for the Colorado Buffaloes as they get beat 41 to 10 here in Pullman, Washington. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Buffalo Stampede. Voice of the Bus, Mark Johnson, along with the Coach Gary Barnett. What do you want to say about that one? There wasn't much positive in that ball game. No, there wasn't, Mark. Um, I think this was definitely a game uh, in which we had a chance. I mean, I and I think as as the game went on, our defense started to show up a little bit. But we need to play a complete game, and a complete game means our offense has got to step up and be the kind of offense everybody thought they were going to be when the season started and the way they started the season off. But you know, it just didn't happen. And it's been two weeks in a row now where, uh, you know, we've thrown seven interceptions in two games. Uh, and that's, that's after only having two going into the first that's four. Right. So, you know, it's just, uh, um, you know, we've lost our confidence. And uh, I can see Stevens lost his confidence. And this team's got to get it back. They really do on offense. Yeah, six of those interceptions by Stephen Montez over the last couple of ball games. Buff did run for 179 yards. In fact, Alex Fontenot with 11 carries for 105 yards, his second 100-yard ball game. This offense was supposed to carry this team. They get veteran players over there that right now are making plays. Well, and, and that's exactly right. And and we're not doing that. And it's. Uh, you know, we've just been so inconsistent since since really the probably the fourth quarter of the Arizona game. Yeah. And um, you know, I, I'm not sure. I'm a lack of words for describing exactly what it is because I'm not on the inner inner side of it. But yeah. uh, they, they've got to restore it. They got to get it back, or it's going to be. A longer season than any of us thought. Yeah, as Gary said, we were wrapping up with a post game show on the radio side of Colorado Football Network. He said this team has lost its stinger, its aggressiveness. And we've seen that from this Buffs on the offensive side of the football. You know, we mic'd up receivers coach Darren Chevarini before the ball game, before they took on the Cougars here in Pullman. Oh, you only get so many chances to do this. Only, only so many chances to do this for, for real. Now you got to take a little extra time looking the ball in today. So have your minds right, go out there and compete. Every single play, you get a chance to get out there, compete, keep your gloves dry. In between plays, keep your, keep your fist closed, keep the rain off it. But when you go, you got to go. We're going to start off in 11 personnel, gun left, Z cam, black Seattle, 11 Visca, 11 Nixon. Now we're going to go gun rover, fast, red screw, river swap, black horn, H New York, crow, 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 lot, black viper, Frisco shade, punch Roy, Z fly. We're going to go flee, red gypsy, queen Liz, red whiskey, squeeze ace Liz, Z fly, red Ohio Q, Z he might can you. If he can you, go. Go in there and smoke that dude, all right? It can be red screw or black screw, depending on the hash we're on. If that guy sinks inside, KD, speed, 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 go outside of him. Tight ends, get lined up on the opposite side. You guys run the crush routes, shade to the field. Now that corn likes to sit off and inside. Z, remember, when you go in motion, after that ball snap, get lost for a little bit and be up to the sideline. So this has been a good play for us. We got to get that stretch going, man. It's receiver on the fly motion, go fast. Steven might give it to you. If not, it will be Ohio inside. If they press the single side receiver, you got to win. Nine yards, snap it. He can still throw it versus press. H's, remember now, come off and get that corner. Receiver, catch it, get under the tackle and hit it with speed. Outside receiver, switch curls at 12 yards. Should be a good play for us. The first DeSoto we go, Katie, I want you at H. We're going to take a shot. That right, was Coach Shev before the ball game, trying to get ready and pump up the Buffaloes to beat the Cougars here today. It doesn't happen 41 to 10, the final score. All right, put yourself in Mel Tucker's shoes. You've been there before. You got a football team, first year, trying to change a culture, and you got a team that's on its heels right now. You're, you're trying to create a culture, Mark, is what you're trying to do. And uh, you got to understand uh, this team isn't really much different than what it was in the spring. You're right. still young. You still got a bunch of new guys playing on defense that that aren't ready to play college football, but yet because of the situation, uh, they are playing, and they all came here to play early. So here they're getting their chance, but they're finding out it's big boy football now, and they got to grow up. And uh, it's a tough it's a tough lesson for them, and a tough go. Uh, 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 Mel. Mel has got to understand that. I think he's got to also at the same time be express his disappointment and challenge the guys that he has, the older guys that have been on this team, and especially the ones on offense, that they need to step up and, and one, be leaders, and two, they got to carry this football team. Yeah, Mel made a comment I thought was interesting in our postgame 
As he's wrapping up, I asked him about kind of moving forward. You got USC coming up. He made a change of quarterback late in this ball game, and he says, "I'm looking for guys that want to play." It's a term we hear all the time, but right now this is kind of a gut check kind of time. It is, and you know, it's you got to be really careful with that statement because. Um, you know, the last thing a player wants to be accused of is not wanting to play. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's thin ice, and you got to be real careful with how you handle that. But I, I totally get where he's coming from, mm -hmm. and I totally understand that you really don't want to step on the field unless – because it's, it's somewhat like war. It's battle, and yeah. you want to be there with guys who want to be there and want to sacrifice and want to do the things it takes Buffs to have, win. Yeah, Buffs have a heck of a challenge coming up. They've got UIC coming to town for a Friday night game at 7 o'clock next week. A lot of talent on that roster for Clay Helton's team. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, they're playing hard for him. So this is just – every game is going to be a big challenge from here on out, and they just got to see if they can meet it. Yeah, Buffaloes have dropped three in a row. They're out three and four in the season with the Trojans coming to town. We'll take a time out here in the Stampede. Coming up next, we're going to go to the secondary. St. Ariane Raystraw joins us here on the Stampede. Dangerous pass here, and it's going to be intercepted. Darion Raystraw. It was the interception by the junior, Darian Redstraw, as the Buffaloes fall for the third straight game as they lose last weekend in Pullman, Washington, 41-10. Back in the stampede, voice of the bus, Mark Johnson, the guy who had the pick uh, in that ball game. That's two, two interceptions for you this season. Yes, sir, two this season so far. Yeah. How would you say your level of play has been so far this year? Uh, I think I'm getting better every week. Um, I'm making less and less mistakes every week that we go on. Um, you know, the coaches are pushing us real hard, you know, so I feel like I'm, I'm elevating my game with every week. I'll tell you this, you know, Coach Barnett on the radio broadcast, every week, you know, you jump up and make a play, make a nice tackle, get an interception. I think he said a half dozen times this year, he goes, Darian Rakestraw has probably made the biggest jump on this team from sophomore to junior year. What do you think about that? Oh, uh, I mean, I, I believe it. I mean, last year, you know, I was at safety last year, really my first year getting in there. And, uh, you know, I was kind of inexperienced and all kind of unprepared. But, you know, I've just been getting more and more comfortable with it the more that I get in there. So. And it, it's a good thing because with all the injuries and all that's been going on, you've right, called right. upon a lot more. Definitely, yeah. It's a lot more responsibility. You know, I'm I'm owning it and, I, you know, I want all of it, you know. So yeah, Without question. What, what, what do you think you've made the biggest jump? Has it been physical or, or the mental aspect of the game? Uh, really both. Um, Last year wasn't wasn't as physical, um, but you know with the coaches we have now, you know they really harp on being physical. So you know it's the physical aspect of it and the mental aspect of it. You know it's a lot more thinking. You got to make a lot more calls. So uh, it's really both of them, both of them combined. Yeah, and then uh, you're trying to develop as a player, and then as a new coaching staff, which means there's a new system. Well, we're right. going to put you back a little bit. You got to kind of you know quickly get, get through the learning curve there, don't you? Right. Yeah. Yeah. But. When we first got out here, I was up there every day with the coaches, watching film, you know, trying to learn the plays. So it, it, it's been a learning curve, but I made it a little bit easier for myself. Becoming a uh, upperclassman, do you take on more responsibility then from a leadership standpoint? Definitely, definitely. They look to the upperclassmen to step up. Um, you know, Coach Tucker was telling me today he wants me to lead. So I'm, I'm trying to go out there and encourage my teammates, you know, help some of the younger guys. we got a lot, a lot of young guys in there playing, so I want to help them out, coach them up a little bit. We'll continue talking with safety Darian Raystra. On the first segment, we saw Darren Chevarini, the receivers coach for the Buffaloes, and the assistant head coach. We mic'd him up before the game. We also followed him on the field in Pullman. Ain't that bad, though, last time, though. Go, TV, come on. Here we go, man. Let's go, man. Football weather, here we go. Let's go, now. You got to look it all the way in today. Look at it. You got to look it all the way in today. Keep your gloves dry. There you go, Visca. Let's go now. It's a great day for football, man. It's football weather. Play in the backyard right here, boys. Hey, right, it's time, time to take over, right? KD, Visca, Tony, Dimitri, let's go, Vontae. Let's go, Daniel, Reese, J Jack, let's go now. Hey, it's our time. Make it happen. One snap and clear, one play at a time. You guys got me? Let's go, blackout. On two. One, two, receivers down here. Let's go stop routes on the outside. We got stop routes. Sink. Now finish. Good, Katie. Hey, corner route, smash. You got smash. Get out of it. You got like Red Ohio free, okay? Red Ohio free, put the ball in left middle. You got, you got H match, it's closed middle, that cover three. Stay skinny. You got stop over here, here we go. Let's go shake route, here we go. Let's go quick fade, okay? 
Come off the ball. Here we go. Good. Hit it. Good. Stay at feet. That's coach Darren Chevarini uh, up in Pullman. Buffalo's coming off that loss last week. Let's kind of talk from a team standpoint now. You guys dropped three in a row. Take me into the locker room, into the, the middle of this roster. What's going on with you guys? Um, it's it's really nothing that the other teams are doing. It's all on us. Um, nobody that's beat us has been just, you know, out of this world, uh, better than us. But, you know, it, it comes down to us. It comes down to execution, you know, playing hard. So once we get that down, we play, you know, mistake-free football, let's penalties, let's bust the penalties, and we'll be all right. The one thing we found out about Mel Tucker is he's kind of non-negotiable. He's got his, his the goal in mind. He knows what the message is. It doesn't vary from that, does it? That, right. When you have a coach like that, does that give you confidence? Definitely. I got a lot of trust in our coaches, uh, especially Tuck. You know, he, he's he been here. Uh, he's been at a lot of places. He knows exactly what he wants from this program. He knows how to get it there. So, you know, I, I listen to everything that he tells me to do. And you know, I just try to focus on it and really just try to improve my game like that. Is it, I'm going to say, easier to follow, let's put it that way, when you've got a guy like, like Mel Tucker who is steady, certainly he gets upset with things, but he doesn't, he's not an emotional guy, he's not, a, he's not an up and down kind of thing with him. You know exactly where, what he expects from you. Is that easier to follow? Oh, definitely, yeah. Like you said, we know exactly what he wants from us. We know what's expected. So, it's, it's, you know, when we don't do what's expected, you know, we just expect to get, you know, yelled at or whatever. So, it's, it's, it's nothing too bad, but we know what we need to do. We just have to do it. How tough was that area offense for a defensive uh, secondary player to play against last week? Uh, it was it was tough. You know, they have a good offense. I think it was, the, the, like, the best passing offense in the country, something like that. But uh, we had a good game plan going into it. We just had to execute. Like I was saying, just comes down to execution, staying on our man, you know, and just playing our coverages. And you want to get a big bounce back on Friday night, right? Yes, sir. We're going to get it done. Right, good luck. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Darian Rinkstra, safety for the Cowboys of Buffaloes. They've got USC under the lights at Folsom Field on Friday night. Coming up next, nice win over this past weekend by the CU soccer team. And Gabby Chapman is going to join us next. Starter now in her junior year from Colorado Springs. Chapa skips through, trickles through, and buries it in the pink net. Gabby Chapa all the way down the far side with a little skip step, clears the ball and passes the goalkeeper. Well, that got the bubble to start as they roll to a 2 1 win over Arizona State in soccer. Back here in the Stampede, voice of the boss, Mark Johnson. The young lady who had that goal. First career goal, by the way. Gabby Chopka joining us here for a couple minutes. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, you're, you're a defender, so scoring goals does not happen a lot for you. Take us through it. <laughs> yeah, it was actually pretty rare. Um, I don't I don't really know what happened, but I just saw the space and took it, and then nobody pressured me. So yeah. uh, I saw the two center backs stepping to me, and I just kind of slid on by and found the net. Now you had a nice little move in there. You had a nice, I did, yes. Yeah, kind of <laughs> avoided a defender and took it on in. Did you go up to Danny Sanchez afterwards and said, see, give me the ball more. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I think that would not end to good things. But um, he was proud of me and yeah. he was happy about that. So. And then not only did she score the goal, but she assisted on the game winner for Tessa Barton as well. I did, yeah. So um, I just took the ball up and uh, saw that Tessa was making kind of an outside run and slipped her a little ball and she was able to kind of have some composure and finish on that. Yeah, she's turning out to be a very nice player for you guys. She is, she's yes, player. definitely. Yeah. She's stepping up. All right, two to one. You get a victory. You guys needed that, didn't you? We definitely did. I mean, it was crucial to get a W this weekend. So uh, I think that just kind of builds our confidence for this upcoming week. It's going to be a battle. So that was really good for us. Okay, kind of give us a thought about where, where this team is at right now in terms of its play. I know there, there are some struggles there. Nice to get that win. Where have been the good things? Where have there been the bad things here recently? Um, we definitely had two challenging weeks these last two weeks, um, playing the Oregon teams and then going to California and playing USC and UCLA. So I think just after challenging games like that, you have to come back and reflect about what we need to work on. And I think this last week and this week coming up, we've been really focusing on communication and mm -hmm. just working, working for each other. So the Buffaloes get the 2-1 to one win over Arizona State. Afterward, we hooked up on this week in Colorado Soccer with Camilla Shimka. I thought the Arizona State game was a really good game. We started off really strong. Uh, Gabby, my roommate, um, came in and just dribbled through the whole team and scored an awesome goal. Arizona State had quite a bit of possession. And then um, we just kept playing, kept playing our game. And then Tessa scored another great goal. And we ended up winning 2-1.
I think we all know that Stanford and Cal are both very, very good teams. Um, especially with Stanford coming up first, we're really just focused on that, um, one step at a time. Um, I think we just know that if we're gonna give them um, a game, that we need to really just be focused and communicate and do what we do best. With Cal on Sunday, um, it's gonna be a, a big game for us. And with it being senior day, I think all of us seniors who are out on the field are just gonna give it our all. Um, knowing that it's our last home game too is just really, really sad, especially because it feels like just yesterday I was stepping out onto the field as a freshman. Um, and every time we step onto our field, it's just, it's just beautiful. So it'll be, it'll be really sad. That are some words from this week in Colorado soccer from Camilla Shimkas. We can continue with uh, Gabby Schapa. Uh, Buffalo is uh, getting ready for a couple of big ones this weekend. you got number two Stanford coming to town and then Cal on Sunday. We'll talk more about that here in a moment. How did you become a Buffalo? You're a junior now, so you're kind of an older player. But how did you become a Buffalo? I am, yes. Um, so after my freshman year, mm -hmm. I decided to come back to Colorado. I'm a Colorado native. So, yeah, I just I, – I kind of – was a little confused on what I want to do with my life and right. so I thought the best thing was to come back to Colorado and still compete and have that opportunity and um, it's been great it's been a great outcome so far you know what I'm a lot older than you are and that doesn't that doesn't ever end that confusion with life <laughs> yes. that can be, it, it remind people where you that. were for your freshman year I was at the University of Illinois okay. um, it was a great opportunity great experience um, and I don't regret any of that all right, so she's back here. We're glad she certainly is a junior now. Hey, senior day, you don't have to worry about this yet, but you got Stanford on Thursday, number two team. First, a quick comment about that. That's a big challenge for you guys. That is a uphill battle, but I think we just got to communicate and work as a team, and that's really all we can do for this upcoming game. All right, then on Sunday, it's senior day, six seniors. That's always an emotional time, isn't it? It is, and it's it's kind of a lot of pressure. You, you want to compete and you want to do well for your seniors. You want to do well for the crowd. Um, so, yeah, I think I think we'll do well. I think we just got to get out there and go. Important to finish strong, though, for this uh, home schedule. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, that that was something that was kind of lacking last year. So, I don't think anybody wants a repeat of last year. So, we're gonna work hard to not. And you know what's really cool about this on Senior Day? Ralphie gets to run a friend to field. Ralphie, yes. Huh? That is gonna be awesome. It's gonna be a good crowd pleaser for sure. Yeah, well, it's going to be a great finish to the season as the Buffaloes got these final two home games at Prentip on Thursday, number two Stanford on Sunday. It's the Cal Golden Bears for Senior Day. Well, thanks for being with us. Good luck. Thank you. All right, Gabby Shopper joining us here as we talk soccer. Next, we're talking a little cross country pre-nationals last week in Terre Haute, Indiana. John Dressel is going to join us next. That was a good weekend for the Colorado Cross Country teams in Terre Haute, Indiana, as the Buffaloes finished second and third men and women in the pre-nationals. Voice of the Buffs, Mark Johnson. John Dressel joining us here for a couple minutes, finishing eight for the uh, the men. Well, overall, from a men's perspective, give us your thoughts, finishing number two in the pre-nationals. What do you guys think? Yeah, yeah, no, it was a close, close finish with BYU. We only lost by two points, and I think obviously going in, we wanted to win, but I think it gives us, puts us in a really great position for the rest of the season. What's it like running for this program here? And I, I joke with Coach Wetmore all the time. I said, you guys finished second in the country, and you're like, oh, it wasn't a very good. I mean, the, the bar is set so high for you guys, isn't it? Yeah, the bar set very high. Um, I think that's just through the history and then mm -hmm. the expectation that the coaches have on us, and then also the expectations that we have on each other. You know, when we come here on our recruiting visits, the guys who are hosting us, they make it known that, you know, we strive for excellence and we're always wanting more, and so, yeah, it's, it, it is a high expectation here, but that's a big reason like why I am here. It, it does kind of build upon itself. And then just before we started taping here for the television show, I, I see you know, Jenny Simpson walks in. And so mm -hmm. you get these alums who are world champions that come and train alongside you guys. It, it, I suppose yeah. that probably kind of helps build the expectation and what you guys expect from yourselves. Yeah, no, it's great. It's great to be able to be side by side with those Olympians and in, even Olympians that aren't here with us currently, mm -hmm. but have gone through this program. It's promising as to you know what what maybe we can expect later on if we decide to go forward more with running after college as well. I mentioned John finished eighth just behind him in ninth was Joe Klecker your teammate. Mm -hmm. You guys kind of push each other. I mean you, you got to be oh, one definitely. of the better tandems in America I would think. <laughs> you guys must really yeah. push each other. Yeah not a lot of programs have a one-two guy like we do here at CU with Joe and I and it's been like that since freshman year so I know he and I we definitely 
both push each other greatly. If We wouldn't be as good as we are today if it wasn't for each other. So We're going to keep talking some cross country. they got, let's see, the Pac-12 coming up, the regionals, the nationals. Right now, though, we step aside on the volleyball. The CU volleyball team this past weekend was involved in one of the longest five-set closest losses in school history. Colorado comes in 0-7 on the year conference play. You'd never know it. They push the Cal Bears to the limit. Buffaloes battling back in that third, held the lead and then held on to it, thanks in large part to a standout performance from this freshman, Alyssa Alcantara. Turns back, and we will play five. What an effort from this Colorado team, pushed to the brink. I feel like the chemistry, like as the season has passed on, um, we've been getting really closer together, so that is like a really huge plus and the match in Cal really showed that because like we took them to five and I don't feel like we would have done that if we were like playing as individuals. Sterling's last block brought us so much more momentum into the fifth set. That block in general was just so like mind-blowing that everyone just like dropped to the floor everyone was so excited and just like brought us more um, like momentum into the next set. Going forward from Cal I believe that taking that energy we can bring it into the home game because we always play better at home. That's always like a really important like role in playing together. About Jesse Mahoney, the volleyball team, back home for a couple of matches against the Washington schools this week in the Pac-12. As we continue with John Dressel, you're talking a little cross country. You, know, you talked about you and Joe since your freshman year. I want to get you a mm -hmm. quick comment about Kashawn Harrison. Uh, yeah. He really had a nice finish as a freshman yeah. for you guys in the pre-nationals, didn't he? No, yeah, he really did, and we're very excited with what he can do for the rest of the season. He's a great, great fit for our team, and, yeah, it's great that he's here yeah. with us. How about the, the women's side? We'll get a little – you can be a – commentator right now now <laughs> okay. women finished third how do you mm -hmm. think they did I think they did really well yeah um, I know like the team's dealing with a little bit of injuries here and there but I think like as they know as the season progresses anything can happen on that given day so yeah we're, we're each each program's really striving to be the best that we can be uh, in, in November so now in about a week and a half the Buffaloes then have the <laughs> Pac-12 conference championships up in Corvallis Oregon do you know much about that course I don't. You yeah, don't? I've never raced there. Okay. And it, it was going to be in Corvallis, but they actually changed the location. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to be, I think, in Salem now. Oh, okay. So yeah. just outside of Corvallis. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. A little bit of pressure there, I would think. I mean, you guys, it seems like an annual thing. The men and women come home with the titles. Yeah, the pressure for Pac 12s is very high, you know, because the coaches really want us to focus on that. And nationals was the two biggest meets for us uh, this fall. And so uh, I think right now we're going to be like the favorites for that meet. So. People are going to be hunting us down, but we got to run our race and be confident with what we can do. And then a couple of weeks after that, it's the regionals. A week after that, the nationals, which sends you back to Terre Haute, mm -hmm. which kind of a, you know, we were talking with Mark Wetmore. It's kind of a unique course. It's a cross-country only course. Yeah. Do you like that course you're ultimately going to be running in? Yeah, I do like it. Yeah. I think I think it benefits the bus for sure. We've had great history and success there. Um, so I know the weather is going to be a little bit more rougher than it was this past weekend, but I think yeah, we're going to do great. I like it. Well, good luck here to week and a half of the Pac-12s. So. Thank you. Appreciate All right. John Dressel, lead runner for the Colorado Cross Country team as they get set for the Pac-12 and then the regionals and the nationals coming up here shortly. That wraps up the Buffalo Stampede this week. I'm Voice of the Boss, Mark Johnson. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you next time.